Hi, my name is Jim Dwyer. I'm a crop specialist with the University of Maine Cooperative Extension, and today we're going to talk about potato virus Y. Potato virus Y is one of the most important diseases impacting potato production worldwide. Many times it's found in combination with other viruses. Plant viruses, including potato virus Y, are infectious pathogens. They are so small they cannot be seen by a traditional microscope. As a result, they must be detected by either electron microscopy or molecular diagnostic methods. Unlike other living organisms, virus have no cells. Instead, they take over the cells of the host organism, in this case, potatoes. Potato virus Y can be transmitted to potato plants via mechanical transmission by equipment and possibly by seed cutting. However, the primary method of transmission is by aphids. Potato virus Y is a non-persistent virus. When an aphid probes a PVY infected potato plant with its beak, also called a stylet or proboscis, to determine whether it is suitable for feeding, PVY can be picked up within seconds. After that, it is easily transmitted to another potato plant if the aphid moves on it and probes as well. Potato virus Y does not remain with the aphid for very long, a few hours at most. Once it has acquired the virus, the aphid can transmit it to one or two plants before the virus is cleaned off. The virus charge will have to be refilled before additional transmission can occur. The disease caused by potato virus Y produces a variety of symptoms, including a mosaic pattern on leaves, leaf streaking, or flecking which can vary in intensity from no visible symptoms to severe foliar symptoms. The symptom expression can vary by potato cultivar and by strain of the virus present. In recent years, several new strains of potato virus Y have emerged in North America. Some of these can cause internal and external symptoms on tubers. An accurate and timely diagnosis is essential for successful treatment of any disease. Infection symptoms may display differently in the foliage depending upon the potato variety and the strain of PVY. In this video, we will demonstrate what to look for with different strains of PVY on several potato cultivars. With each of these cultivars, we will also look at the most widespread virus strains, PVYNO, PVYO, PVY Wilga, and PYNTN, which will display in both foliage and in tubers. So these two varieties of potatoes are really good examples of what we're talking about in terms of difference in symptom expression. So this is red Lesota. This is a very uh, popular red variety of potato. And you can see, so this line here is not infected with viruses. These, these are healthy potato plants. This next row is infected with the older strain of PVY, and then the next two rows are infected with the newer strains of PVY. And interestingly enough, in red Lesota, as you can see, is that the potatoes are not really affected by any of the strains of PVY. If you get really close to the plants, you can see some symptoms, but they're very difficult. And you can imagine as an inspector walking through the fields, it would be very difficult to distinguish between these healthy plants and these infected plants. And so the, the amount of virus in the red Lesota crop would probably be drastically underestimated. Whereas here we have Ranger Russet. Um, this is a, a long sort of baking potato. And Ranger is severely affected by the old strain and the ordinary strain of PBY. So again, here's some healthy plants here. These are fairly young plants. But you can see that the PVYO infected plants are one, they're very short, and very stunted. Um, the emergence is not, there should be five plants there, and so the emergence is affected. And if you got really close to the plants, you'll notice that some of the leaves are turning brown. Um, and that's a really interesting symptom of the virus. It causes, it will actually cause these plants to die back probably in another two to three weeks. And they will not produce very many tubers, if any tubers at all. Whereas the two newer strains of the virus, which is behind us, um, are not very, they don't cause much symptoms in Ranger. 
If you got really close to the ones at the end there, you'll start to see some symptoms where you get some lighter green and darker green areas of the leaves. We call that mosaic. And you can see that if you get really close and you get the plants in the shadows. But again, it would be pretty difficult just walking through a field to identify those plants which are infected with the newer strains of the virus. So this is another a variety. This is called Nadine. Uh, this is a fairly recent introduction. This is a European variety of potato that was brought over to North America several years ago. Uh, again, the healthy plants are in front of us. The plants infected with PBYO, the ordinary or the older strain of PBY. Um, the plants that are sort of missing in the third row are those that are infected with uh, the variety or the strain of the virus we call NTN or the tuber necrotic strain. This variety, Nadine, is very susceptible to this tuber necrotic strain of the virus. If I had a tuber, I could show you um, when the tubers come out of the ground, they have these um, really distinctive rings on them, these necrotic rings or brown rings on the surface of the tuber. And in storage, these things will become sunken rings and really destroy the quality of the tuber. And you can see from Nadine is that not only does this cause a problem with the looks of the tuber, but also those tubers that are infected are very slow to emerge if they emerge at all. Okay, so there's, there's a couple plants there that are really short coming up. And then in the, in the background there is Nadine, which is infected with another one of the newer strains of the virus we call Wilga. And um, those plants are pretty severely infected. Um, they're growing okay, but if you got close to them, you would notice real severe symptoms on those plants. So those would be pretty easy. Whereas the, the O plants here are not really severely infected. There are symptoms in those plants, and I think that looking carefully at them, you could distinguish between healthy plants and the infected plants. But again, this is a variety which is very um, differently affected by the three major strains of PBY that's out in the field these days. Oh, this is a, yet another variety of potato we call Kiyuka Gold. This is a, a, a yellow, yellow flesh potato. Uh, very popular. Um, again, the, the healthy plants are growing quite well. The ones that are infected with the old strain or the ordinary strain of PBY are severely affected. These plants will probably all die back in another three, four weeks or so. Probably will not produce very many tubers. The ones that are infected with the tuber necrotic strain or the NTN strain, those plants seem to be doing okay. If you got close to the plants, you would notice a, a mosaic symptom on those plants, almost sort of a yellow blotchy look on the leaves. This variety is also severely affected by the tuber necrosis. So when these tubers come out of the ground, they, most of them will be affected and probably will not look very good on the grocery shelves. And then the, uh, the ones that are infected with uh, the other new strain or the Wilga strain are in back there. Not showing very good symptoms at all. Probably very difficult for the inspectors or the growers to, to recognize those as infected plants. So I think you can see that depending on the variety of potato is that they're very differently affected by these different strains of the virus. Some are easy to see, some are very difficult to see. And what's going on above the ground is not necessarily indicative of what's going on below the ground. Plants infected with the PBY that do not show any symptoms can still be tested for virus presence using commercially available test kits. Testing, the testing procedure is very simple and involves collecting a leaflet, smashing it inside a sample bag, inserting a special paper strip inside the bag, and waiting for several minutes. The number and location of lines on the strip indicate whether the leaflet is infected and whether or not it's infected with a necrotic strain of the virus. Disease outbreaks happen when three elements come together. A suitable host, in our case potatoes, and possibly some other plants. Conducive environment, in particular aphid vectors, weather and landscape, and the pathogen itself, which strains are present and where they reside. Interfering with one or more of these elements will prevent the spread of the disease. There are three key integrated pest management principles to manage potato virus Y. First, reduce 
the level of initial PVY inoculum to the crop. This is done by planting only certified seed. Post-harvest test results may be used as a guide to select seed lots with low virus levels and thus reducing the initial inoculum. Practicing good sanitation, PVY can be, can be mechanically transmitted. All cutting and planting equipment should be disinfected before coming in contact with seed as well as between seed lots. PVY can be transmitted from an infected plant to a healthy plant via sap on hands or equipment. Destroy overwintering sources of PVY. Cull piles must be controlled according to established guidelines in the particular area. If tubers in a pile are infected with the virus that produce sprouts, these sprouts may serve as a source of PVY inoculum. Control volunteer potatoes early in the season. Rogue potentially diseased plants within potato fields as well. Roguing means the removal and destruction of any unwanted potato plants in the field, thereby reducing potential sources of inoculum. The second method is to use resistant potato cultivars. It is important to understand the terms used to describe resistance and the ways which potato plants can resist disease. The terms to describe resistance are tolerance, resistance, and immunity. Growers should be aware that the level of resistance to PVY and the strains of PVY have not been fully characterized for many potato varieties. Tolerance. A tolerant variety is one that grows and yields well even when infected with PVY. Tolerant cultivars may or may not display visual symptoms of virus infection, even though they may support high levels of virus in leaves and tubers. Tolerant cultivars can be an excellent source of inoculum. Avoid planting cultivars with poor symptom expression in close proximity to fields with susceptible cultivars. Resistance. Resistant cultivars will often have a reduced virus concentration in the plant. It may restrict the movement of the virus within the plant. Resistance plants will have less severe to no visual disease symptoms. Immunity. Immune cultivars do not support virus infection. However, a given cultivar may not be immune to all strains of PVY. The third integrated pest management strategy is to reduce on-farm spread of PVY by aphids. Relatively few species of aphids can colonize potato plants because of toxins in their foliage. Insecticides can be used to manage populations of potato colonizing aphids from increasing within a field, thereby limiting plant-to-plant -plant spread of the virus. However, non-colonizing aphid species still land on potato plants, probe them with their beaks, and only then move on looking for a more acceptable host. These are usually responsible for the most PVY transmission. Insecticides are not an effective means of control of these aphids. Mineral oils, such as JMS stylet oil or AFE oil, interfere with the aphids' ability to transmit PVY. The exact mode of action is uncertain and may include flushing out the virus particle from the aphids' beaks or repelling the aphids from treated leaves. Another strategy incorporates the use of antifeedant compounds or selective feeding blockers, such as insecticides Fulfill or Belief. It is important to understand which aphid species are transmitting the virus and when they are moving in the field in order to time the use of these materials. Field placement and management design is another strategy. Avoiding planting potatoes downwind from commercial fields. Also prevent late season virus infection by top killing seed potato fields early. Incorporating the use of border crops surrounding high value early generation seed lots because aphids usually land at the interface between fallow ground and a green crop. Border crops will cleanse PVY from the aphid stylets before the aphids find the potatoes. This technique has proven effective in limiting PVY infection in seed potatoes. Borders utilize plant species that do not support the infection of PVY. 
PVY infection is a complex problem that cannot be resolved by relying on a single silver bullet technique. However, knowing what is going on in the potato field, integrating different methods to address the issue will result in harvesting a high quality, plentiful crop.